In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the uh, street Photoshop action. And so we use this action as a basis to take our photo and create designs like this. And so you can see a few other extra uh, um, graphic elements uh, on top here. So I've included them as brushes in the download. So yeah, we use the, the action to create the base effect and then we can add uh, little bits and pieces on top to help build up the design. So another example I quickly did was this one. And you can see we can uh, easily change all the colors. Uh, a few other examples I quickly did was went from this to this. From this to this. And from this to this. Alright, so let me just close these down and start off with our photo. So the first thing you need to ensure uh, before running the action is that your photo layer is set as the background. So it should have that lock symbol with the background text. So if it doesn't, uh, just go to the layer menu, go to new and select background from layer and it will set it as the background. Uh, next, just go to image mode and make sure you're in RGB color mode and 8 bits of channel is selected. And lastly, just make sure that uh, you're using a good size photo. Uh, mine's 2700 by 2600. Doesn't need to be that big, but I would recommend uh, going no smaller than a thousand pixels uh, for this action. Okay. So, uh, and one more thing to check: if you go back into the layer panel, just this top right-hand corner icon, select that. Go to panel options, and just make sure add copy to copy layers and groups is selected. Click OK. Alright, so now the first thing we need to do is create a new layer. So if I hold down Control Shift N, uh, and we, it has to be called brush with no uh, capital letters. So that's very important. So create your brush layer. And with that layer selected, just hit B on the keyboard to get your brush out. And select a, select a brush. And you want to just uh, brush, you can use any color. We want to brush the area that we want to uh, concentrate all the effects around. And wherever we brush, uh, it's going to discard all the areas around it. So we're just going to be keeping uh, yeah, the area that we brush. So to make this a little bit quicker, uh, I did brush one. Okay, so I've got this one here. Uh, so you can see I've got my brush layer. And that's all ready to go. So now we need to... Uh, load our actions panel so let's remove that to show you how i got this up so if we go to the window menu and go to actions uh, the panel will pop up over here and so next you want to go to the top right hand corner icon here and select load actions and then select the streets.atn file and the folder appears here so now this is all ready to go so uh, all you need to do now is click play and about 30 seconds into the action, we're going to get a pop-up where it's going to ask us to choose a texture to place over our design. So I'm just going to click play and just going to let it run now for 30 seconds and then we'll pick a texture and go from there. Okay, so now we have this pop-up. It says, now select a texture. Uh, once you have positioned the texture over your photo, hit enter on the keyboard to continue the action. If you need help, just come back to this tutorial. Uh, click continue below. So just click continue. So what we want to do now is navigate to our textures folder, the textures that were included in the download. Uh, you can use your own textures as well if you want to, but I've just included these. So what we're going to do is this, uh, pick one of these textures, so I'm going to grab this one, double click and you'll notice now it appears in our Photoshop file but the action hasn't continued, we've got this box around the texture it's just asking us to uh, position it over our photo 
So what I'm going to do now is grab these handles and uh, scale that up to fill uh, to fill the um, photo. And with that done, don't forget you can also rotate it as well. Uh, with that done, all you need to do is hit enter on the keyboard. And so now the action is going to uh, take about another two minutes from this point. And from there, we will jump into the layer panel and I'll talk about, go through uh, every single layer and what it does, okay? So I'm just going to fast forward the video to get to the result. Okay, so the action's finished and you can see here we have our uh, default result. You can see the texture's been imported and it's been overlaid throughout certain areas of our photo. Uh, so now let's go into the layer panel. So let's minimize the actions panel here. And inside the layer panel, the very first thing you always want to do with this action or any other of mine uh, is to quickly collapse all these folders. And so to do that with the with the um, layer that's already selected, just hold down Control Alt on the keyboard and click that arrow. And what that'll do is just quickly collapse all the folders so now everything is needed right up for us. Okay, so. I'll come back to the adjustments folder, but basically, zoom in a bit here. This has a lot of uh, different ways we can color uh, our design, uh, make some contrast and brightness adjustments. So I'll come back to that one. Uh, I've left the brush layer on, so if you wanted to uh, run the action again, just shift select these, delete them, and then run the action. So what we're going to do now is go into the street folder here, and I'm just going to go down, down the line here and talk about uh, which uh, what each layer and folder does and then when I've gone through all these layers um, I'm going to open up another photo and I'm just going to run the action and then go through a really fast workflow to turn that into a, a design as quickly as I can. Okay, so this very top one uh, called reveal base photo brush into the mask if you wanted some areas of your photo to uh, be quite prominent uh, and to stick out more than other areas what you do you select the mask here, grab yourself a white brush, and you want to brush uh, over your photo where you want it to be uh, much more prominent. Generally, it'll appear darker, so just keep that in mind. But uh, so that's what that layer does. Okay, so uh, with each photo you use, you're going to want to experiment with that one uh, pretty much straight away. So the next one down is shadow fill number one. So what this layer does, uh, you want to play with this box here. So if you double click on that, change the color, you will see that it will fill in uh, the shadows, the darker areas of our photo with the color that you pick. So it's just a, a really quick way to add a bit of extra uh, detail to our photo. So use that color there. Uh, so just remember by default that one's black. So the folder below called lines, so if I turn this folder on and off, you can see that it overlays our photo with all these little squiggly lines and dots. Now generally, uh, this is the folder that I like to go to straight away when the action's finished because uh, if I'm using this action on people, generally to put lines over their face where I don't want it to be. So what you can do is just select the uh, the mask here, select that, grab a black brush and just brush into that layer where you don't want the lines to appear, just like that. So immediately that's cleaned up that area, uh, so that's good. So if we go inside this folder, we've got a bunch of different layers here. So the top two, uh, if I move these two around, you can see that it, uh, it outlines the edges of the area that we brushed uh, with just these little dots, so just a little bit of detail. If you don't want them, turn them off. Uh, these are just all the very subtle lines that uh, appear everywhere. Now these two at the bottom offset white lines. These are the most prominent ones, so if you turn those off, you see all the white lines are gone. But what I like to do is, if I select that folder and hit Control J to duplicate it, uh, I can make a copy of all those layers really fast. So now, if because if you wanted the bright, if, sorry, if you wanted the white lines to appear a lot brighter, that's a quick way of doing it. And what you can do then is just 
uh, click the word opacity and drag to the left to bring that to zero to 100. So if you don't want it at 100, you can just drag that handle around and get it to something that looks that looks good. So 50 percent looks good. Okay, so going on down, we have these four layers in yellow. Now these ones are quite important uh, because they uh, you, they control how your photo blends with the texture in the background there. So with each one of these layers, I've got adjust opacity in brackets. So that's what you need to do. Just start at the top, grab this uh, word opacity and just drag to the left and right. And you can affect uh, uh, yeah, how the photo blends with the details around it. So this one here is called gray pencil shading. Uh, this photo is not showing the best example, but you can see that if I increase that, you get a bit of grayness come into the photo and you see a bit of uh, like this smudge texture appear around the outside. So if I go on down, just adjust this one, 100, 0. So the idea is you start off at 0 and you slowly drag to the right to get something that works really well with your photo. Number 2, and then shadow darkness. So this one will just increase uh, the darkness of the shadows. I think this one will keep it zero. So yeah, make sure to play around with those as soon as the action's finished. Uh, okay, so this folder here, texture, this houses all our, uh, sorry, the texture that we imported. And you can see that it's um, blending down through our photo. But the way this works, if you go inside the, the folder, we have six layers. So we've got uh, red and orange. And so this one here, texture inside, we have texture inside and texture outside. And so they are essentially the same texture and they are linked together. So if I just move this texture around, they move together, just like that. And so, uh, so the way this one works is this, this is the inside. So this is the texture that will appear within the area that we brushed. And this texture appears on the outside. So this way we can actually control the colors that appear within him and uh, outside of him using the same texture. So for example, we have these two adjustment layers above our inside texture. And so what we can do is select the randomized inside color and just play around with this handle here. And you can see that it's affecting uh, the color. And so what you'll also notice is that it's, it uh, slightly affects the outside color as well, which I'll show you why it's doing that and why I've done it that way. Okay, so let me just go to the inside texture. So we have this mask here. So if I alt click, uh, hold down alt and click on that mask, we can go inside. So basically, anywhere that's white, the texture will appear. But anywhere that's black, it won't appear. So what I've done is where it would be black, I've made it gray, so it's going to appear about 50%. So about 50% of this uh, of this texture of its visibility is appearing on the outside as well. So that's why when I change this color, it's it's not completely changing the, the color, but you know by about 50%. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So we can then uh, play around. We can use a solid color. So if we turn this one on, double click on that box, we can fill the inside of him with uh, yeah, a color. And then again, you can use this handle to quickly randomize that color. It's a quick way of previewing different colors. All right, so let me just turn that one off. And that works exactly the same for this, this one here. So you can apply a solid color on the outside. You can randomize that. So if you want two solid colors, you turn that one on. Turn that one on. And so now uh, we're just using essentially two colors. All right, but there's more ways to color it uh, in the adjustments folder, and we'll get to that shortly. So I'm just going to turn those two off. And so moving on down, we have shadow fill number two. So this works in a similar way to this one, where we just click on this box and play around with the color. You can see. Uh, let me just select uh, purple. You can see it feels purple. 
in the dark areas and if I go to the top one and say fill this with something that stands out yeah you can see that uh, that targets a slightly different area so we can get a really good range of uh, colors okay so going on down we have a smudge texture so if I turn that one on and off you can see around the outside here that it just adds a little bit of texture Grain, this is a very subtle layer, you won't really notice it too much, but it just adds very fine grain over our photo. Soft, uh, dark area fill, so this one, it's not really showing up too well. Uh, basically, it aims to brighten up some dark areas of your photo. You won't need to play around with that one too much. And then this one here, shadow fill number three. Uh, again, like these other layers, so if I just change this color, you can see particularly around his face, if you look around his face there, if I just change the colours here, uh, you can get yeah, uh, add a new range of colour. So I'm going to just keep that orange. Then going on down here we have the background colour, so you can just double click on this box and you know pick a new colour, uh, just like that. And if you wanted to say export this as, uh, with a transparent background, just flick these two bottom layers off. Now you've got a transparent background so you can drop that onto uh, something else. Okay, so that's essentially how all those layers work. So now I'm gonna go inside the adjustments folder and talk about what we've got in here. Okay, so this top layer here is use original photo color. So if you turn this one on, what it will do, it will keep all the effects but it will use the original colors of our photo. Okay, so that's a handy one if you wanted to just yeah, keep the original colors. Flick that one on. This one here adjusts brightness, so you can quickly double click on this layer, play around with these handles to adjust the brightness of your photo. This one can come up a fraction. Okay, so this uh, layer below boosts contrast. If you turn this one on uh, and play around with the opacity, you can adjust the contrast. This photo is looking pretty good how it is, so I don't really need to use it but it's there. Overall saturation, so if you double click on this one uh, you can do a few things here, we can play around with this handle here to experiment with some slightly different colours but I think we've got something that's pretty good. You can play around with the saturation as well. So the next two layers are good ones to use together so if you turn this one on use a single color it will just apply uh, pretty much that just a single color to your design okay and if uh, one thing to remember about this layer is if you see so drag uh, this down to a really dark blue it doesn't update it's because our uh, blend mode is set to hue and it needs to be set this way to apply it to um, the colors across our photos so what I like to do is you know just pick say if I want to make uh, so use a pink texture but I want to be a bit more a bit less saturated I just go into this one overall saturated and just play around with this handle here you can also just slide this one around again to play around with some more colors Bring it down a little bit and then this one here, shadow filler. If you turn this one on, what this layer does, it will fill all the shadows with a color. So this, this looks really good when you um, choose a different color. Just play around with, with the settings here. If one's too bright, just bring this down. like that okay so those two work well together now if you turn these two off and we just use our original colors here we have all these folders here now these are additional color options and so the way these work is if you just uh, flick on the eye to these folders uh, there's different uh, different color options within each one and so what I like to do with these if you turn one on sort of like that I think it's a bit too strong select the folder and just play around with the opacity so I'll bring it to zero and I'll just drag up a little bit so I'll just use a little bit of that one 
you know, I could just use a little bit of this one. So you can see how you can sort of build your own look by just playing around with the opacity of these folders. Okay, so I actually liked, I might just try a blue. No, no, we'll leave it. We'll leave it like that. Okay, so that's how the, all the colors work. Like I said, uh, after this section, I'm gonna open up another photo and I'm gonna go through this entire workflow again to show you how quickly you can uh, create some cool designs. So what we wanna do now is play around with the included brushes and we're gonna add some graphics and some, you know, some subtle uh, line textures. So what I like to do is just create them in between these two folders. So if I just select the streets folder and go Control Shift N, create a new layer. I want to create each one of these graphics on a separate layer so I can move them and rotate them, scale them individually. So uh, with that done, I'll just hit B on the keyboard. Get my brush tool out, right click. So what I want to do here is I want to load up um, my brushes here. So if I go to this icon and go to re uh, replace brushes, just select the street brushes.abr file and they are now in here. Uh, if you have seen them very small like this, just go to this here and go to large thumbnail. Alright, so you can see there's a bunch of different uh, little hand-drawn graphics here. I've also included a list of uh, a lot more free ones you can download um, in the readme file, so just check that out. So what you can do is just grab any one of these and you can see it there, you can change, use any color. Uh, you can use these square brackets to go up and down in size of the brush. So I can just place that there. Uh, and next, uh, so what I like to do now is then create another, so control click then, hit B, uh, grab something else, Grab this, Control T to scale it, it's a bit too big. Oops, try that again. And then let's add one more, uh, maybe, no, maybe just this cloud up here. Okay, now. Uh, a few other details that I'd like to add, if I create another la layer, i go down the very bottom here, there's a whole heap of different like drips, uh, like paint splashes, and little uh, pen strokes here, so what I'll do is grab one of these, and I'll use some white, and I'll just brush it somewhere, but what I'll do is I'll, re I can scale that, reposition it, and just move that over an area where it looks uh, not just try this side again. So one thing to remember about where you uh, place these brushes, if I move this above the adjustments folder, you can see that they're now more white. Uh, it's because in here we are saying that we want, uh, with this single color, that we want to fill everything, you know, with this pink. So if you want your brushes to be affected by the colors in the adjustments folder, put them below, otherwise put them on top here. We'll do that. So I'm just gonna brush on a couple more of these uh, textures. I'll grab this one. If you want it to appear brighter, just brush twice. So just like click, click twice, increase the opacity of it. And there. Try uh, this one. Anyway, I think you get the point there. But uh, so that's that's a good way to use the um, the. Uh, little pen stroke brushes. It's just to overlay them uh, over an area that looks really organic and flows well with everything else. So 
uh, there you have it, that's how you use this action to create uh, designs like this really fast. And so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to close this down and open up another photo and just go through the workflow again and uh, create a design. So I've opened up uh, my next example here. And so I've created my brush layer and I've just brushed over the area that I want to keep and apply all the effects around. So I'm just going to go to the actions panel and click play and just let this run for about 30 seconds and then we'll choose a texture. Okay, so I'll click continue and just navigate to some textures and for this one, let's just go this one, so zoom out a bit, scale it up, hit enter. So I'm just going to fast forward the video now and go from the result. So the action stopped, so what I'm going to do now is customize this, so I'm just going to minimize this and hold down control alt click on this arrow to collapse all the folders now looking at this the first thing i want to do is clean up the face area a bit so i'm just going to select the lines folder mask and brush uh, got a soft brush just remove some of those lines i'm also going to select our reveal our base photo and grab a white brush brush into there to make just, just make the face appear much more prominent. Uh, I'm just going to check how this affects. Uh, it's only very subtle. Might just make it red. Uh, so I'm just going to play around with the opacity of these. Add a bit of that, about 40%. Shadow darkness, keep that at zero. So now I'm going to jump into the texture folder. And one thing I did forget to mention in the first example is a quick way to uh, replace this texture. So if I just right click on the texture and go replace contents. I can choose, just double click on a new texture and the design is updated. So I'm just gonna up, I'm just gonna undo that. So you can sit there and just right click, replace contents and check out a whole heap of different textures to see which one best suits your photo. So I'm just gonna play around with these colors a bit. So I'm just gonna double click on randomized outside color and drag this around just Let's keep it there. It's kind of cool with the blue. I might just check out a solid color and then randomize that. We'll use that. We'll stick with these colors for a moment. We'll play around with them a lot more up in the adjustments folder. So that's that. Uh, this I might just check out. Might use a green for that one. And this one I think won't be that prominent. Nope. Uh, and if you wanted to blend the background onto the original background of your photo, just turn off uh, background color. And another thing you can do is to um, experiment with different ways that the texture sits on the background is if you select the texture folder and just um, scroll through these blend modes, you can get a whole variety of different ways that the texture sits on top of your photo and the background. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn that back on. Might try like a light blue. Like that. So I'm going to jump now up into the adjustments folder. I'm going to play around with some of these settings. Add a 
fucking DACA. A tiny little bit of contrast. 4%. I'm going to uh, play around with this handle here to see what other color combinations look good. I'm just going to fill in the shadows a little bit with this uh, this color here. Let's check out some other colors. Actually, that might work better. Click OK. Uh, we won't use the solid color because we want to use all these different colors in the background. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to click on down through these folders to see what other. What I like to do is I'm clicking down ones that I think could work. I just rename them just to remember which one it was. That could look cool. Just a little, tiny little bit of opacity. Well, that one's nice. I think I might use, yeah, I might use that one. I'll see how it looks blended with that one. Probably a bit too much. Yeah. Alright, so we'll keep those two. Uh, what I might just quickly check again is randomizing this outside texture color. Just double check that that was, that one's pretty cool. No, I think we've got a pretty good color set here. So we'll, Keep that. Uh, I might just quickly check one other texture. So I'm just going to, so I just right click, replace contents, and might check this one. Scale that up. Control T. Flip this vertically. No, I think this one looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some brushes. Uh, actually, before I do that, I'm going to try. I'm just going to duplicate the lines folder. Okay, that looks better with more more lines. So I'm just going to adjust the opacity a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to now create a new layer. Control Shift N, hit B on the keyboard, right click uh, to get our brushes up. And I'm going to start off by just brushing in some. Just going to zoom in a bit here. Just brushing in some fine lines. So I'm going to. Uh, going to move that up onto his shoulder. Control Shift N, create another layer. Hit B. Uh, for this one. Maybe. Control T, I'll rotate that. Uh, sit that around his knee. Make it a little bit smaller. Okay, might just add one more somewhere. Uh, so grab this one. Just add a little bit of detail up around here. I'll hit J, Control J to quickly duplicate that, just so I increase the brightness of it. Control T, scale it. Move that just there. Okay, so I'll add a couple more brushes. Uh, maybe this guy. Might add it. Uh, yeah. Another one. Okay, and grab this. Of course, if you've got your own 
um, cool fonts that you want to use, you can just type out uh, some words. There, I'll create another one. Uh, maybe just these stars. Just like that. Scale them down a bit. Okay, so there's my um, layers that I've brushed on. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to shift select all those and hit Control G just to group them. Uh, just, just rename that brushes, so I know. Okay, so what you can also do with that folder, again, you can just mess around with the um, different blend modes. Maybe something like that, vivid light, so you get a bit of crossover between that and the background textures. I'll move that whole fold around a little bit. Just check this again with a white background. I'll just keep it like that. Alright, okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm done. Uh, I'm just going to get back up the original photo. So you can see that uh, a bulk of the time that you want to spend uh, with this action is just playing around with the colours and, you know, brushing on some some of these extra little lines and uh, some graphics. But generally, uh, once you get the hang of the workflow here, you can you can really pump out these designs you know, every 10, 15 minutes uh, pretty easily. Okay, so that's it. If you've got any questions, uh, please email me and I'll help you out. If not, have fun using it. Thanks.